Today I'm going to give you an update on my 3D printed hydroponic towers and all the things I've learned in the last couple weeks. Let's get into it. As always, I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech. If you'll recall in the last episode, we 3D printed a hydroponic tower. Now, there were a lot of things that I learned along the way that make this a better experience, hopefully for you if you're just getting started with this. You'll also notice that I have two towers now. I've expanded. I've started growing more vegetables, more varieties of plants, and I've got a lot I can share with you. Now to start, I want to show you some of the health of the plants. As you can see, these tomatoes at the top are getting pretty big. And I'm going to show you their root system, which is pretty crazy. One of the coolest things about hydroponics is that you actually get to see the root system of your plants. And man, check that out. It's pretty insane to actually be able to see the entire root system of the plant. But the cool thing about this and why it's so neat in hydroponics is that you can tell a lot just by looking at the roots about the overall health of the plant. You want these kind of long white roots that's a sign of health. If they're dark brown or they're turning different colors or they're rotting or shrinking, you can tell that there's probably something wrong with either the nutrients or there's some sort of infection in the water. So that's one of the first things you'll want to notice is just the overall health of the roots. Different plants also have entirely different root systems. Tomatoes, it makes perfect sense that they have long roots because, well, they're tall plants. What about things like peppers? Well, here we've got our banana peppers, and as you can see, much shorter roots, but the same thing. We're still looking for those nice, white, clean-looking roots to come out of there. Now, while the plants look great now and their root systems are coming in, that definitely wasn't the case when I first started out. In fact, within about 24 hours of planting my first plants, I started to notice some of them were dying. This one's a good case in point. This is one of my apocalypse peppers. And as you can see, these initial leaves that were on the plant started wilting, they started turning brown, and in general, the plant started just looking droopy and unhealthy. Now, the first thing I did was think, well, I must have too much nutrient solution in here. So I halved my nutrient solution, but I didn't really notice a difference. I let it run for a couple more days, and the plants were just looking worse and worse. In fact, I thought I was gonna lose the entire system. Now, as it turns out, the nutrients were not the problem at all. It wasn't sunlight, it wasn't nutrients, it wasn't water quality, it was the pH of the water. I was using tap water straight out of the sink. And the problem with that is the tap water in Denver has a pH of about 8.2 to 8.3, which is, it's fine for normal plants in soil, but that pH is far too high when you're planting hydroponic plants. Ideally for most hydroponic plants, you want that pH to be in the 5.5 to 6.5 range, which meant I needed to use RODI water. That stands for reverse osmosis deionization. I happen to have an RODI system for my saltwater aquarium, so it wasn't a big deal to swap the water. As soon as I did that, my pH was in the 6 to 6.2 range, and the plants almost immediately perked back up and started looking healthy again. Now, what if you don't have access to an RODI system, but you still wanna have healthy plants? Well, something like General Hydroponics has pH up and pH down. The pH down makes the water more acidic, it's an acid, and the pH up is a buffer. You can also use regular vinegar, white distilled vinegar to be more specific, or baking soda in order to raise or lower your pH accordingly. But the best thing to do is to test. And in order to test, you need the equipment. Now, in my case, I went and picked up a pH meter and a TDS meter from Vivosun. I'll drop links in the description so you can get your own as well. What this does is it gives you a simple way of just dipping this in the water and getting a reading on your pH. That tells you where you're at. And then you can, from there, buffer up or down depending on where the water needs to be. This, for example, I have a reading of 6.89. That tells me that I need to buffer this down a little bit. I need to drop my pH, add a little bit more acidity to the water. Now, of course, water pH isn't the entire equation. You also need to make sure that the total dissolved solids in the water are within line where you need them to be in order for your plants to get enough nutrients. That's where your TDS meter comes into play. 
simply turn it on, dip this in the water, and that's gonna give you a reading of parts per million dissolved organics in the water. I try to shoot for between 700 and 1100 parts per million with the Max Grow fertilizer that I'm using. Now maintenance wise, these certainly aren't zero maintenance, but it's really not that bad. On a daily basis, maybe every other day, you're gonna to wanna to come in here and top the water up with RODI water, or if you're using tap water or filtered water, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that whatever you're topping it up with has been buffered for pH. Next up, every week to 10 days, maybe a little bit longer, you're gonna to wanna to empty out the reservoir at the bottom, clean it out a little bit, make sure there's no algae growing, top it up with fresh clean water and new nutrient solution. That's just gonna make sure the health of your plants is top notch. The other thing you might run into is pests. Early on in this, I had a bunch of holes show up in my leaves and that's because I had aphids in the garden. So what did I do? I went out and got some ladybugs. You can order those online or at one of your local flower stores. There is a shortage right now, so they're a little bit harder to get, but check and see if you can get them locally first. I released around 1,500 ladybugs, and I haven't really seen any problems with the plants since. This is gonna be a little bit easier, of course, if you're growing these indoors. I personally plan to transition these from outdoors to indoors once it becomes closer to winter and fall. Now, as far as plant variety is concerned, I've got three different types of tomatoes. We've got mint, and man, this mint is looking good. We'll show you that root system. Look at that. We've also got banana peppers. We've got oregano, apocalypse peppers. We've got some bean sprouts that my son planted. Another oregano. I'm gonna try out cucumbers. We've got several different types of lettuce, including arugula. And over here, we've got a couple more varieties of lettuce, rosemary, and even some pumpkins. Now, time will tell how these all end up doing out here, but so far, they seem to be thriving seem to be doing really well. Now, one thing I have heard is that the flavor and the taste of the plants grown hydroponically can differ slightly from those that are grown in soil. I haven't experienced that too much yet, but then again, I've only been eating some mint and a little bit of lettuce, so I haven't really had a chance to fully flesh that out and see if that's the case. I'll, of course, follow up as time goes on and let you know how this progresses throughout the rest of the summer. One other thing I've been experimenting with, but I'm not quite ready to make a recommendation on is using a timer. This timer can come in handy because it's able to set intervals. For example, you can have the pumps come on for 30 minutes and then turn off for two hours. Now I tried that and we had this spat of three or four days in a row where it was over hundred degrees and the plants in just that two hour time period where the pumps were off, started to droop and not look very healthy. I think if the plants were indoors or temperatures were a little bit lower, doing those intervals would work out just fine. For now, I'm running the pumps 24 seven on both of these towers. Now, how are the 3D prints themselves holding up? Well, as you'll remember, I printed these out of PETG, which holds up great in outdoor high temperature situations. Plus they've got cool water pumping through them. It's really not a big deal. I am noticing some discoloration along the joints, and I think that's from the Maxigro plant food that I've got pumping through this. It does have a green and red tint to it. If you don't wanna see some of that discoloration, you might consider printing these out of a different color material, perhaps green, or even just a slightly darker material. You wanna be wary of using something like black, just because, again, high temperatures, you don't want that heat absorbing material to be close to the leaves of the plants, and potentially cause issues. Apart from that though, I haven't had any issues with the structure of the 3D print itself. Now, a couple tips about the plants themselves. If you start your plants inside and you transition them to outside, if they weren't exposed to long, high heat levels and lots of sun, they can start to droop and lose some of their leaves right off the bat. My son actually started some beans in a hydroponic system indoors, which we later transitioned outdoors, and some of the plants did end up dying. Some of the leaves fell off. Now they look great. The ones that survived and the ones we transitioned into the tower are really starting to thrive, but just keep that in mind. You might put this in a place that doesn't get direct full sun all day long to start with, and then move it into direct higher sun 
as the plants get more accustomed to being outside. Also note that it is entirely possible to start plants from seeds directly in these containers. You can see here that I've got some basil that I planted as seeds. And you'll notice it sprouted and it's starting to come in here. Now that kind of orangish brown material that's around it is called rock wool. And you can pick that up online. It's really just a material that helps hold the plants together, helps hold that moisture while the pumps are off, and really just helps the plants grow while they're in a hydroponic system. Now, what if you don't have the time to start all of your plants from seeds because it's already a month into the growing season? Well, rest assured, you can actually pick up plants from your local garden center that have been grown in dirt. You just wanna make sure to take the root ball that's full of that dirt and you wanna rinse it out really thoroughly. Be very gentle. You don't wanna damage the roots or the plant, but just dipping it into a bucket of water or rinsing it with your garden hose in about five minutes or so, you should be able to get almost all of the dirt out of there. You can then transition the plant into one of these jiffy pots and they do really well. I actually started off with my tomatoes and a couple of these other plants from ones that I picked up that were already grown in dirt. And after a few days in here, they start to really perk up. And as you can see from their root systems, they're doing great. That's about it for today's update. As always, let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions, if you have anything you'd like me to address in my next update. Otherwise, I'll let you know how these things taste and as we get closer to harvesting.